everyone. It's late October. My name's Jason, and I own a chainsaw. Yeah, so we're up here at the lake. Just got done skiing in this, uh, know, was it 12 inches yeah. of powder or so? It was a little deeper up there. And I decided we'd grab a few timbers on the way out of here for firewood this winter. I just want to say how happy I am with this build. Um, where has it been? Yeah, San Juan's up to uh, eastern Idaho for a race, uh, western Wyoming, around Jackson Hole area. Um, been to eastern Washington around um, Plain for a race up there. Been down to Fish Lake, Utah. Um, been up again into the far southeast corner of Idaho for the Bear 100. Did a did an aid station there. Used the camper as kind of the base camp, I guess. And it's own oh, Bear Lake for that matter. It's just been really pleasant, and I can still use this as a truck, as you can see, and use it to haul stuff. I don't see too many people with sprinters doing this kind of thing. Um, yeah, I've been really happy with it so far. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna take it off for the winter though. I'm working on a plan of somewhere to store it. So let's get on with the rest of the build. So this is where we left off last time. The camper was pretty much complete, mechanically speaking. Um, first thing I did was cut a piece of plywood for the bed platforms. Both of these platforms I was able to get out of a single piece of 316 inch plywood. So we marked them, cut them on the table saw. And um, 316 inch was a little thin, so I had to reinforce uh, the areas that weren't supported from underneath with some strips of cedar, as you can see here in these pictures. Worked great. Um, and then these were attached to the space frame using self-tapping uh, screws. And that's worked quite well so far. Pro tip. Be sure and put this bulb seal in place before you mount the roof. Because it is a pain to get in here to work. So I was uh, trying to figure out how to get the dimensions for the tent by just measuring it. But I finally threw in the towel and went ahead and modeled it, this 3D model. Um, I modeled it as a sheet metal part and was able to bring that sheet metal part in, flatten it out into the into uh, drafting and get the dimensions from the draft. All right, so I just happen to have this big, mostly empty room up here above the garage. It's exactly the right size to lay out the canvas. And we've got all the tools here that I used sheet rocking square, tape measure, and this piece of angle iron to transfer the dimensions onto the tent material. Ignore that line, that was a mistake. 
So I think we're ready to start cutting. Kind of scary, huh? Here is the tent material after I cut it out to shape. Uh, now this next section of the video, disclaimer, I do not know how to sew. And so I'm going to show you what didn't work for me so that you don't have to make the same mistakes. But as far as what did work, I don't know if I did it right. So I'm just going to leave it up to you guys to kind of find your own way on this next part. All right. It's been a few days. I haven't got a lot done. I'm playing around with a sewing machine. Finally uh, made my first couple of hems. I don't know anything about sewing. Just watched a few videos and read the lousy manual for that secondhand sewing machine that I got. And decided to just take the plunge. So what I'm doing is I'm basting, I guess, these hems just with safety pins. They should be about a quarter inch hem so that the zipper can span that gap. Quarter inch hem on both sides. And the first one didn't go really well. It kind of pulled it more like that, so it would probably have a big wrinkle in it. Oh well. And then I learned to figure this out on my own to just safety pin the rest of the material into a big roll so it'll fit through this area here. All I know is that I raised the foot. Insert the material. Ah, no. Oh, that's a help from the dogs. No, 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 no. Get lost. Go on. No, go away. So I'm going to go, I'm going to start in about a half inch, then I'm going to lower the foot. Yeah, this isn't working. You have two hands. No, hey, uh-uh. Okay, I got a dog on the foot pedal, that's not good. Okay, go away. Go lay down. No dogs on foot pedals. Okay, so go in about a half an inch. Lower the foot. And I push this button over here and it's gonna go in reverse. And let go of the button. And go forward until I get to my pin. Take my pin out. And then just keep going, trying to keep as narrow a hem as I can. And then when I get to the end, I reverse it again and then cut the thread and pull the fabric out of the machine. Okay, so we got to the end. We did our reverse stitch by pushing this button on this particular sewing machine. I'm going to raise the foot, pull the fabric through, and cut the thread to the needle and the bobbin. And just kind of Remove it from the sewing machine and get set up for the next hem. 
Okay, so here goes nothing. I got my zipper taped down to the fabric um, using basting tape, which is basically double sided sticking tape. Um, I've got the shiny side out. You can't see that, but I do. That's the waterproof side, apparently. So again, we're gonna hit the reverse button. Oh, didn't drop the... Okay, now I can see we got a problem here. I did get a special foot. Let's raise the needle. I did get a special zipper foot for this machine. But I don't think I need it. If I can stay off to the side of the zipper with the regular foot. Okay, that's reverse. I'm gonna go a little bit more in reverse. Okay. Okay, now the thing I don't like about a black zipper and black fabric is I don't know if it's actually stitching. <laughs> So it's actually tracking pretty well because the zipper's right along the edge of the foot there. It's helping me go straight. So I kind of like this. Okay, so yeah, I just forget that last portion. Uh, we went with no hems. My wife pointed out that this fabric was pretty robust and didn't want to unravel around the edges. So we just went ahead and sewed it without hems. And it's holding up pretty good so far with no fraying. <clears throat> Hemming was causing the problem. I got pretty frustrated and I didn't film any of that. But here are some pictures. Turned out fine, I guess. It's working. Um, oh, and here's also a picture of the little corner vents for ventilation. They did not work very well. I would make those twice as big if I was to do them again. And then we mounted the tent inside of the structure using the 8020 attachment and the Keter rails. Uh, that part went really smooth, surprisingly. Um, didn't have any trouble there at all. Everything just fit great. We were really pleased with the end result. Okay, a little wrap-up video here. Speaking of wrap, I didn't uh, make any video of me installing the vinyl wrap. There's nothing exciting there that you can't learn from other YouTube channels. Uh, <laughs> They know what they're doing, I don't. But it does take two people to hold it into place, to smooth out with a squeegee. Um, if you get any wrinkles, stop and, you know, peel it off and put it back on again. Any major wrinkles that you can't get out with a squeegee. If you need bubbles, they're fine, because you can push on them with your thumb. This is actually perforated. Kind of cool. And you'll squeeze the air out by slowly pushing. Just be patient. Um, so once I figured that out, the wrap went fairly straightforward. Um, these graphics I just found on Amazon, just to kind of dress up the side for now. Uh, the only other things I've done, uh, I did add a, a high-mounted brake light. I didn't need it because the Gladiator has one here, unlike the Tacoma, because the Gladiator's roof comes off, so they have to put it here instead of in the roof. But I did put one there because when I have my bike rack on here, it blocks not only this one, but pretty much the side ones too. So I just thought it'd be extra safety there. And I wired that. I don't know if this is kind of a unique way or not, but I installed one of these uh, camper uh, plugs in here. And I ran that down to my trailer wiring. Let me see that there. And across and then up into that plastic grommet in the side of the bed. So I not only got um, the brake light signal from there, but also I got uh, positive and negative 
from the battery from there. So eventually I'll put like a UPS charging block here <laughs> and uh, lighting through the rest of it. The only other thing I've done that I don't think I've shared yet is I did install this extra little ledge here. It's removable. It just pops up and, and this piece of aluminum angle on both sides so it can slide back and forth. The netting was working fine from, for keeping the pillows from falling down, but every now and then I wanted to stretch my legs all the way out and I'm 6'1", and so I needed the full seven and a half feet of, of bed platform because, you know, the wedge takes up a few inches um, in the front. So that's like perfect. If my pillow's on this, I can stretch out as much as I want. So that's nice. My wife's shorter than I am, so we didn't make one for her. But this, like I say, this can slide back and forth and it's easily removable. And it's just um, the same memory foam that I used up, up here, um, just wrapped in some leftover tent material and stapled, nothing special. It's kind of Funny though, this memory foam is like rock hard at these freezing temperatures. So just keep that in mind. If you're going winter camping, you might want something softer than memory foam. All right, that is it. I think that's the end of this video series and unless I think of something else, some other mods I do, I might throw another video out there. Hope you've enjoyed it. Yeah.